Well, I decided that to write about organizations, you had to write about decision-making process, that that was the heart of it. And that uh, was a fairly new idea then, but it certainly was already embedded in Barnard's, uh, Barnard's work. Uh, and then I simply sat down and, and tried to think of how that decision process could be described. And I first gave the economist's account of it as a basis for showing how I proposed to depart from it. And then I essentially, in the fifth chapter of the book, uh, laid out what today people would talk about as bounded rationality and showed how the actual choices people make are different from these ideal choices in economics, A, because the alternatives aren't given because the consequence, well, all, for all of those reasons. Economics, there was, of course, a highly formalized theory which said that people had preferences that all somehow that came together in a consistent way into something called a utility function. So if you preferred A to B and B to C, you wouldn't turn around and say, oh, I really prefer C to A. Um, and that people somehow or other looked at an array of choices before them. All of these things were on the shelf, and they picked the one that maximized the utility. And that seemed to me to be a very uh, dubious way of describing human choice. Uh, first, because I couldn't find in my own mind or in my friends a consistent utility function. What we prefer depend, it seemed to me, terribly on what our attention happened to be on at any given moment. Uh, secondly, we never had full information or anything remotely compared to that about the consequences of choosing this or that. You could think of some consequences and miss other enormous ones. Uh, third, uh, that when several people were involved, we had no way of comparing their utilities, and economics gives no way. So I found that model very unsatisfactory from the time that I did the Milwaukee study, where I couldn't see that kind of a trade-off uh, going on in those decisions. The term bounded rationality is, in my mind, uh, largely intended as a warning to economists that you cannot predict human behavior by setting up an abstract model of what is rational and inferring the behavior from that, that you have to know a tremendous amount about what is inside that person's head and about the methods that that person uses for calculation. Uh, and uh, that, that is, those are empirical questions that are not to be settled by sitting in an armchair. On my uh, complaint about economics, which I sort of sum up with that term bounded rationality, is that modern classical economics, not Adam Smith, but his descendants, uh, modern classical economists, think that they can build theories without ever going out and inquiring what human beings actually do. Now, bounded rationality by itself is not a positive contentful theory, although I have made suggestions for such a theory in connection with it. Uh, it is rather a, uh, a strong, uh, a strong uh, uh, demand that, like any other empirical science that proposes to explain the world, we go out and observe the world.